Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the Redibus MA1 mobile radio. And regardless of whether you're a regular ham or a prepper, I think this rig's got some features that everyone can appreciate. Okay, let's get going. The MA1 is a dual band mobile radio. It's UHF, VHF, wide band with a thousand channels, a 50 watt VHF transmitter and a 40 watt UHF transmitter. One of the really unique features is that it's got dual tuners. So I can be listening to two different frequencies at the same time. People will pick on me for talking about Chinese radios, but my favorite ham of all time is a Yezu 8900, which has the same feature. Those radios are discontinued and they're really expensive if you can find them online. So I can monitor two different frequencies, calling frequency and a local repeater at the same time. So that's really, really neat. The radio also features a cross band repeater function. So you can act as your own repeater. Crossband means that it's UHF and VHF, so you have to program your radio in the right way. What that was intended for originally was that you put this radio in your car, and if you go out hiking and you have a handheld radio, your handheld radio might not be strong enough to reach a local repeater, so you use VHF from your handheld to get back to your car, and then VHF to go from your car to a local repeater so you can bounce a signal. I actually have used that in my real personal life. Uh, I used to live in an apartment. I was on the inside of an apartment complex and I couldn't hit my local repeater. So I parked my car up on the roof of the parking garage, programmed the VHF side to be the 940 repeater in Austin and the UHF side to be a different frequency. And so I could sit in my apartment with my handheld, hit my car and then bounce back out. So if you're looking for kind of an emergency purpose or a preparedness purpose, that's a really uh, neat feature to have a kind of in your back pocket. Also has voice scrambling capabilities. It's voice inversion. It's not uh, encryption. And it also has a detachable head. Now, a lot of people don't talk about that, but the front of the radio will actually come off. So that way you can remote it. And we're gonna go outside in a little bit and I'll show you how that works. Hey, if you're finding this interesting, please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. It's a big help to me, thanks. We've got a, a USB port on the back for programming. It does come with the USB cable. Uh, it loads it as a serial driver. Um, it is not currently trip compatible to the best of my knowledge, but they do have their own software available. The software is a little on the rough side, um, but you can kind of work your way through it. it it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, what I have done is opened up Chirp, loaded my programming file, and then put the Redivis software next to it to copy the offsets over. It doesn't automatically adjust your repeater offsets. Little annoying, but you know, you're not going to be reprogramming your radio all that frequency, so you just kind of deal with it one time. Um, I've been running this for the last couple of days. I've gotten really good signal reports uh, on the drive time in downtown Austin, so I'm really pleased. Let's uh, take a little closer look. So here's the front of the radio. Got my microphone jack here on the side. And every one of these buttons, these function buttons, are reprogrammable through the software so you can get it to do whatever you want. I've got just a couple of frequencies programmed in. So 2 meter calling frequency, the 940 repeater in Austin, uh, Bernie when I go to see my in-laws, and Georgetown for the uh, north, re uh, north repeater. You can see here, it says PTT control. Let's see if you can see that. And that tells you which VFO you're on. So if I wanna to toggle back and forth, I just press the knob. These are the volume and squelch uh, controls for each side. And then over here is your channel selection. Also, uh, if you hit enter, it will toggle back and forth between the frequency 
and the name, and you can also just have it run the channel number. I like having uh, the name of the repeater because I can't remember it by call sign. On the back, antenna connection, external speaker ports, and the USB-C for the programming. I believe you're gonna have to use the cable that it came with because it installs it as a serial driver. Uh, does not do data. Uh, I wish that it did, but it's just for programming. So no data or packet interface at this time. Okay, let's talk about the detachable head. So if I hit this button and slide to the side, the face comes off. You got this little telephone plug on the inside and it comes with a longer cord. And then I plug the mic into the side. And now I can separate the mic and the head from the rest of the body. You are gonna be limited by, you know, like if I put this underneath my seat, which I'm planning on doing, the uh, speaker audio might be a little muffled, which is why you're gonna likely wanna use an external speaker if you're gonna be uh, remoting this. But let's uh, see what that's like in the real world. And this is the mounting plate for the remote head. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Prepper Mobile. Uh, this is a 2020 Honda Fit. There's not a lot of room up here. I've been looking for a place to mount a radio for a while and I'm kind of coming up empty. The only space I can think of is right here, but let's uh, see what I can do with the Redibus M1, MA1. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the radio underneath the passenger side seat because I'm using a mag mount and I don't wanna drill holes. I always run the wire from the antenna through the rear passenger side window I'll go down the trim panel and up underneath, and then I can remote the head. I'll roll up the window just enough to put tension on the cable so it doesn't flop around while you're driving at 80 miles an hour. So the Fit's got this little center console and inside the center console is a 12 volt cigarette socket. So I'm gonna wire a cigarette plug to the power leads and also I can put the head down inside here. And then there's this little uh, cutout where you can run the wire so I can just lay my radio out and put it on my passenger side seat when I'm coming home. So there we have it. I've got the mic plugged into the control head. The control head is going down to the body of the radio underneath the seat. And I can work all the controls here and see what I'm doing. All I have to do is pull this out and lay it on the passenger side seat. And I can work my radio when I'm driving home from work. And then when I'm done, all I have to do is drop it back here in the center console. The remote head feature is also really nice if you're wanting to build one of those ammo can repeaters, you know, where you take two bow fungs and link them together. Since this has got a crossband repeater function, all you need is one radio. You can detach the head, use the extension cord to put the face plate on a control panel and bury the radio uh, inside your Pelican case or whatever. If you're going to do that, make sure you turn the power down on your radio. At full blast, this thing will pull like 15 amps, and those really small batteries don't have enough output capacity to be able to do that. So use the right size battery or knock your power down a little bit. But 
using this as a repeater is far better than trying to link the two bow funks together. You know, by going cross band, you only have to use one antenna and one set of wiring, and this will do everything. Full transparency, there is one quirk with this radio. It has about a one second delay from when you key the mic to when the radio actually kicks on. So if you're having kind of a fast conversation with somebody, you have to kind of slow down, key the mic, wait for just a second, and then start talking. Uh, the, the PDT is kind of slow. It's a little annoying. You kind of get used to it. You just need to uh, you know, slow, your, uh, slow your responses down. <laughs> Not a big deal, but I do want to note that I experienced that as well. There is also a package version that comes with a mag mount antenna. It's a NMO to mag to PL259 uh, for just a couple of bucks more. Pretty good deal. So I've got a link down below if you think that this would be a good fit for you. And thanks. We'll see you on the next one.